a very warm welcome to all of you. Today, I'm going to share with you some key insights from a recent CRISPR rating study on the impact of the recently announced regulatory guidelines on first loss default guarantees or FLDGs. These guidelines on FLDGs in digital lending help resolve the ambiguity around its use by banks and NBFCs as part of their co-lending arrangements. It also provides much needed regulatory sanctity even though there could be a near-term impact on business volumes. Furthermore, permitting lending service providers or LSPs to offer FLDG will enable lenders to continue working with non-NBFCs and non-regulated entities provided they are incorporated as a company. However, the norms have been tightened to the extent and form of FLDG cover and recognition of NPAs in partnership models. These include limiting FLDG to 5% of the loan portfolio and not allowing corporate guarantees as a form of FLDG. Now this could dampen business volume in segments where FLDGs are currently higher than the permissible limit. We estimate that a good proportion of the partnership of co-lending arrangements where FLDG is present today, especially those with unsecured personal loan and business loan lenders, currently carry an FLDG cover of above 5%. These segments would be affected by the new guidelines. On the other hand, secure asset classes such as home loans and loan against property where FLDG is typically within 5% may not see much impact. Consequently, we could see some acquiring lenders getting dissuaded from entering into partnerships in the high yielding segments, thereby leading to a preference for relatively less risky customer and asset segments. That in turn would limit growth of assets under management through the partnership mode for sourcing NBFCs operating in the higher yielding segments. Another important provision in the new guidelines is that non-cash forms of FLDG other than bank guarantees have been disallowed. Given that a reasonable proportion of FLDG is understood to be in the form of corporate guarantees today, this would necessitate additional fundraising by the sourcing NBFCs involved. We could thus also see some sourcing lenders adapting their business models to align with the revised regulations. And on that note, I thank you for your time and attention. Until we meet again with another topical theme, goodbye.